Hi, I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about the other half of the typing video that uh, was done with host Eric of talking with famous people. I'm doing this to present to you maybe some of the things that are particular about being an INFP. Now, it's not necessarily that all INFPs will behave in the way that I did, but I just thought it might be helpful to give kind of some of the insights of the flip side of what was going on prior to that interview and some of the things that were going on internally. <clears throat> uh, by the way, I believe myself to be a four wing five in as an Enneagram, if that's important, and an INFPA uh, in case that's important. So anyway, um, first thing, how long did it take for me to decide to be typed by host Eric? I can put that down into two phases. The first phase was the decision to be typed at all. And that took me about, that was about a six month period where I came up with the idea based on watching some other typings that were going on where someone who was not an INFP was clearly mistyped as one, at least in my opinion. And then that made me question whether or not I was an INFP because it seemed like the other person who was typed as such and I had nothing in common. And then the other piece that made me hold off for a long time is that I wasn't sure that my wanting to get type was coming from a good place. If I was doing it simply because I saw someone else who I believed not to be an INFP to, I don't know, stick it to them, to say like, I'm the real thing and you're not, that was not an appropriate, it wasn't coming from a good place. So I was thinking that that was not a reason to get typed. So I made it through that six month period of thinking about it. And then there's another two months that went into looking into what host Eric of talking with famous people was doing. <clears throat> I liked how he was typing with the cognitive functions and not just running through questionnaire. So it seemed to me more than anyone else, he had sort of a practitioner's system down where other folks would just ask, you know, do you like vegetables or do you prefer meat? Or uh, do you consider yourself more of a sun sign or more of a moon sign? And all of this, you know, just stuff that if people self-assess, it would be easy to gain the system. Uh, that being said, on those eight months, I did a whole lot of self-assessment. And I mean, to the point of ridiculousness, a lot of it was that sort of imagining of what it would be like to be typed, what's looking at how other people got certain questions and thinking about how I would answer those questions. And so there was a whole lot of, um, maybe a whole lot more prep work involved than I would have liked, but it wasn't like study prep work. It was imagining what all of this would be like to go through the process. And as part of that, for me to go to a point where I would be willing to go ahead and get typed, was making sure that I was comfortable with whatever the outcome would be. So before uh, host Eric and I ever sat down, I had already made the determination that I was okay with it. If he turned around and said, well, you're an ISFP or an ISFJ or whatever else, that it really, that part didn't matter. My identity hadn't been so closely tied to being an INFP or I've managed to detach from it enough that whatever the outcome, I could then use that as a positive reassessment of myself rather than um, being somehow, somehow coming away feeling lesser for having my expectations dashed. So I also considered all of the other kind of negative ideation of what sort of things would host Eric potentially say that would be a negative, you know, would I piss him off to the point that he'd start yelling at me? Would I be comfortable with that? If I completely flubbed everything and looked really foolish in front of everybody, would I be comfortable with that? So if you're an INFP, chances are you err toward glacial decision-making, and chances are also that you would run through these scenarios not in a... Um, not in a structured manner, but in some sort of a way that you sort of 
work your way through the hypotheticals in kind of reenacting or, or living them inside your head and then making the decision to say, yes, I'm comfortable with that and off we go. Um, still, I would not have pulled the trigger if not for Host Eric's Quiet Week, which suddenly I came to the realization that if I sit on this forever, um, you know, nothing is permanent. And so I potentially, I risk missing the opportunity if Host Eric one day decides that he's had enough or who knows what else. And then I didn't see anyone else doing a similar uh, exhaustive process, although there are others that do some interesting things, um, at least publicly on YouTube that I was aware of. So that is a lengthy preamble, and there's one more component to it, which is that host Eric is an ENTP, and INFPs are uh, in a supervisor role with ENTPs. And I know that because I have an ex-girlfriend with who I went out for three years, and I realize only in retrospect how much I was controlling the relationship and how, toward the end of it, how awful I was to her because I was hitting on her weak points, not understanding that I really you know, abused the heck out of her um, because I was operating from my strong suit to her weak suit. And uh, aside from feeling pretty shitty about that, um, I realized that host Eric is familiar to me. He doesn't intimidate me because I'm, I understand that thought process. I've practically lived with someone who had that same or similar um, methods of thinking. So it's very familiar and I knew what I was getting myself into. So that all worked into it. And what finally tipped the scales was that um, I had to make the determination of whether I couldn't make a determination whether or not this was for egotistical reasons, but I could make a determination whether or not this would be potentially helpful to other people. And when I said, okay, by being typed as an INFP, because there's so few INFPs going through this kind of a typing process, um, if that is the case, it would be helpful for people to understand what an INFP looks like. From that perspective, then there's more merit to my going on whether or not there is a self-serving aspect to this, whether or not there's an ego self-indulgence doesn't matter so much. If other people are helped, that sort of preempt my own um, my own selfishness, if you will. So I got on and I've got to say that being typed is hard because <clears throat> uh, when you look at my typing video and immediately you kind of know the sorts of questions being that will be asked, but when you're being asked those questions in a rapid fire way and they're really kind of they are things that are very deep, I think, for an INFP. So you've got this process, and I'll, I'll map it out, though feeling it out is different from describing it. But um, the description I would give is that you're, you're trying to feel out the right answer, like what, what feels right, um, not emotionally, but more just sort of uh, je ne sais quoi. <laughs> uh, you just you don't really... I can't describe it, but what feels right. But any keeps jumping in and saying, well, what if, and what if this, and what if that, and what if this other thing? So you keep kind of going back and forth about like, well, I can't make a decision because there are too many factors involved in that decision. And that's where you will see that a lot of the, uh, where host Eric comes in asking a question, I kind of pull back and say, well, give me a context or give me a more description because I'm too broad in the scope and I can't, based on that, there's too many variables and I can't come to a decision. But even when the context is narrowed, it's still sort of this whole dialogue of like, okay, rein it in, keep out the crazy, um, you're running out of time, so 
come to a decision. <laughs> uh, and that whole dialogue is going on while you're also thinking about the possibilities that like, okay, you know, it's been five seconds, six seconds, and he's looking expectantly and you got to give him an answer. So it's like, you know, you got to cut it off. So there's a lot of that going on. But the other thing going on as well is that uh, you'll see in a lot of places, I'm doing my best to sort of defer, delegate, um, find some other way to not have to make the decision because making the decision is hard. It's much easier if you can kind of say, well, for these factors, uh, the decision is, you know, uh, I wouldn't know. Or um, you can kind of come up with a very generalized, like, this seems like a good idea because of this general systematic need, rather than being able unequivocally to say, well, here's what I've got for a particular answer. So um, again, if you're an INFP, that all should sound pretty familiar. You can't come to a decision on a lot of hard questions just because there's too many variables and you sort of plumb the depths of what's possible with a time constraint. So you come back with kind of what's an incomplete answer every single time. Like, um, And you try, therefore, to not provide a full answer because, geesh, um, you don't want to commit to something and have it not reflect what you really mean. So um, I took some notes here just to make sure to uh, cover all the bases. Oh, yeah, um, about Eric saying that he feels managed by INFPs. Um, this is, I would say, partially true. And what that means is I think ENTPs are kind of looking to have a debate or get some ground or get some something where they can they can get some purchase. And being an INFP, um, it must be the ultimate foil and completely frustrating because it's like, first, he's not giving an answer and he's not giving any indication of what's going on in his head. He's just sort of, you know, working through it. And then when he does, it's sort of this whinge nothing that you can't really get your arms around to say, well, you know, what about this or that's wrong? Um, if you're an INFP, again, th this is all going to sound kind of familiar. Um, and it's, I think, inherently a, a way that sabotages the way that ENTPs work. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry that uh, that's how it ends up coming across, but it's, um, you know, it's the way that we work. And on the flip side, if it's any consolation, ESFPs, ESFPs are our supervisors and where other people like make fun and, and kind of poke holes in ESFPs logic. Um, it's real easy for someone like me, and I expect other IS, INFPs to be railroaded by ESFPs that have got that high SE and they're just going, you know, they're able to outthink us and they're able to kind of steamroller us. And there's not much that I can do to respond to that. And then they've got kind of that FI role where they can use FI manipulation, let's say. Uh, it's not the right word, but um, at any rate, it's not as if I can impress and ESFP with any answer that I give. And then kind of the rest of the tools that I've got, I mean, they're SE uh, DOM against my SE Polar. I just get steamrollered. So anyway, um, I did want to mention that um, I was very grateful to see that there were people there that were saying, ISFP, I don't see any. And I think that for all of the IN types, people should keep a healthy skepticism and not look at IN classes until proven otherwise. So I'm very grateful that people were looking at me and saying he must be an ESF, ISFP. Um, the thing is, uh, and these are some assumptions. I mean, I'm not sure if this is right, but this is my best guess. Um, my NE is tuned to my FI. And a lot of the NE that you're looking for that Hosteric was testing for is NE linked to TI. That is inky pinkies to me. It's a riddle. And you have to solve the riddle to get the word wordplay. I like the wordplay, 
I don't like the riddle. So that's kind of where, um, you know, I, I have fun making up inky pinkies, but I don't like solving them and I'm not particularly good at it. But if I was asked to come up with a story or come up with a, some sort of poem or, yeah, like use these three different elements and, and just do a poem on the fly, I would be happy to do that. That sort of wordplay is fun for me. The, the other piece of it is that I do, to an extent, suppress some of the silliness of my any, and that's from experience. Um, some of the worst memories I've got are from when I used any and I thought I was being funny and I said something that was extremely hurtful to somebody. And because of that, I kind of censor myself as to what I'm talking about. <clears throat> and that's um, people who know me will know that I'm, I'm all over the place with like wordplay and witticisms and all sorts of crazy talk. But I want to be careful when I'm in any sort of a public situation that I don't let the crazy side out too much because the next thing I know I'm going to say something really bad um, that's going to hurt people or that's going to cause offense or um, that's going to make people look at me like I've got two heads or whatever. So <clears throat> because of that, you don't see a whole lot of any going on. I'm sort of consciously editing it out. Um, when I have an opportunity to be silly, uh, yeah, it, it does come out, especially if I start batting around ideas with an INTP, for instance, we can, <laughs> it can go strange places. <clears throat> So anyway, I think that's most of um, what I wanted to cover. And I hope that's helpful in maybe understanding INFPs a little bit better and understanding a little bit better what was going on behind the scenes there. Um, again, it was my intent from the outset, knowing what the possible outcomes were, to have this published even you know, regardless of the outcome. If I was an ESFP or ISFJ or whatever, it would then be helpful maybe to understand what another INFP mistype looks like. Um, fortunately, or you know, for for better or worse, it turns out that INFP is correct, and I'm very happy about that because it means a lot of my other assumptions about um, relatives and acquaintances and colleagues are probably also more likely to be on point than not, or at least are in the right ballpark. And that, well, it makes me happy because uh, that means the assumptions I'm making are more likely than not to be correct in the way that I'm treating people, um, hopefully is also the way that they would like to be treated. So anyway, enough of that. I hope this is helpful and I wish you all good morning, good afternoon, good night.